Welcome to episode 57 of Success of the Movie, episode of Lies the Joke, and the podcast is based on one one release cards. Rain and Reverie has brought us a bounty of cards for each faction, and the mini factions were not neglected either. In particular, for Sunny, uh, I did not cover the second card that was released for her in the Kitara cycle, so we'll kill two birds with one stone by looking at Black Hat from Kitara and Office Supplies from Rain and Reverie. Let's start with Black Hat, which is a continuation of our previous video. Uh, you saw that we touched on White Hat and we explained what Black Hat and White Hat hackers were. Well, Black Hat is the opposite of White Hat, right? So uh, those are hackers that use um, their skills and uh, penetrate things that they're not supposed to, morally uh, you know, associated with uh, you know, questionable ethics and uh, morally wrong choices. Uh, Black Hat is pretty interesting as a card because um, it turns out that some people did not notice uh, the Black Hat in the card art and that's because it's a negative. It's right there, uh, but uh, past all the uh, digital panels uh, and being a negative image, it also reinforces the fact that black hat is a, a black hat hacker is a negative thing. It's not good for the uh, for the good of the cybersecurity and everything. Um, yeah, so it's kind of surprising to see Sunny here donning the black hat and becoming uh, the evil person. <laughs> you know, the antagonist. Uh, or according to the flavor text, you know, she's exacting justice, um, teaching them a lesson. I don't know. Anyway, any. Uh, Black Hat is a multi-access card for Sunny, which is always nice because she, uh, prior to this, she didn't really have infection multi-access. No, um, <laughs> global sex security clearance doesn't really count. It's pretty awful. You'll notice also that just like White Hat, Black Hat is trace-based. Uh, you need to uh, make the trace unsuccessful, i.e. Uh, the court must not beat your trace. So uh, there will be... Uh, because of that, uh, between Security Nexus and White Hat, there's now a critical mass of self-tracing cards in Faction, so Link and Trace-based cards become that much better in Sunny. It also reinforces uh, the kind of deck you want to build uh, if you're playing Sunny. Uh, it is expensive. Now, both the base trace and the play cost of this card are pretty steep. Um, you know, if you add the play cost and the base trace together, you get number six, and that is a pretty expen a big number for um, multi access. Now, fortunately, you can offset this cost by uh, using link. So, if you have four or more link, uh, black hat will only cost two credits. So that's pretty okay. That being said, because it's so expensive and because uh, the effect is not super good, you are not going to pay 5 influence to splash this out of faction. It's pretty okay in Sunny because she has the link to support it, um, but outside of Sunny, there are just better options uh, for less influence. Now let's move on to Office Supplies, which is a basic economy slash draw card that Sunny barely needed. I think this is a more powerful card than Black Hat even, simply because it you know, shores up one of Sunny's greatest, greatest weaknesses ever. Uh, and that is, she takes just takes so long to set up. By the time you find three copies of Underworld Context and Data Foldings, your opponent's already mostly uh, on their way to victory. And it's quite surprising because I just realized that Office Supplies doesn't cost five influence, unlike most of the recent mini faction cards. Uh, you know, uh, the designers have realized that uh, when they printed the mini faction cards in Data and Destiny, uh, most of them would end up being splashed out of faction. Uh, so they fixed that, but Office Supplies left untouched, only 3 influence. Only? Yeah, you're still not splashing this card out of faction. It turns out that Office Supplies isn't that efficient. Uh, if you notice the card text, it says gain 4 credits or draw 4 cards. It doesn't do both. It would be amazing if it did both, but it doesn't. Uh, because it is uh, either or, it makes it such that you know the the power level is good, especially in sunny decks, but mediocre outside it. Especially since you don't start with two base link in any other identity. Now, because this is um, a basic econ slash draw card, efficiency is very important when evaluating this card. It basically makes or breaks the card. So in some uh, you know, soon enough, we are going to analyze the efficiency of office supplies compared to other econ slash draw cards. But before we go into that, can I just take a moment to express how much I love this card art and the theme? Uh, Sunny being the uh, you know, uh, <coughs> being the 
uh, cooperative and very helpful worker in the office, bringing donuts for everyone when, you know, you know, I guess it's to make up for the fact that she's a black hat hacker doing evil stuff on the nets. Anyway, um, yeah, let's talk about efficiency. Right, so there are two options. Keep that, this in mind for office supplies, either the money option or the card draw option. We'll first look at the money option and we'll evaluate it based on the amount of link you have at the time when you play the card. When you play it at two link, uh, office supplies cost two to play and gives you four credits. That's a net gain of two credits. That's like the money option on infiltration, i.e. really bad. At three link, it becomes slightly better. It's basically an easy mark in faction. Still pretty awful. No one plays easy mark nowadays for a reason. You need to get all the way up to max link, four or more link to discount office supplies all the way to zero. That way, your office supplies will be worth as much as a sure gamble. So that's pretty okay, but keep in mind that sure gamble is best on turn one, right? Uh, when you get the burst economy you need to start setting up. Office supplies can be played on turn one, but chances are you won't have the prerequisite four link on turn one to make it as efficient as a sure gamble. So because of that, the first thing we note about office supplies is that you will rarely ever use the money option because it is pretty awful. Early game, you're just not going to have the link to make it worth playing office supplies for money. And late game, uh, your drip econ engine is giving you so much money already that office supplies uh, for credit gain is rather marginal. Now let's look at the card draw option. This is what you'll be using most of the time. Even with its base effect at 2 link, which is Sunny's base link, it already is better than your sports hopper option that most people opt for prior to rain and reverie. Uh, sports hopper, you pay three credits, you draw three cards, or in other words, one credit per card. Office supplies is already better than that. At two credits for four cards, um, that's uh, you're, you're getting twice as many cards for the same credit. So yeah, office supplies already beating out sports hopper for card draw uh, right off the bat. It only gets better as you find more and more link. At 3 link, it becomes an inject without the downside, right? You pay 1 credit, you draw 4 cards. That's pretty amazing. Uh, not many other cards events in the game that draw you 4 cards uh, after playing 1 card. You know, things like Diesel and I've Had Worse only draw you 3 cards. Anything that draws you more will come with drawbacks like inject. And Office Supplies? Better than inject already at just one additional link. When you get four or more link, that's when you start talking. If you have ever played guys with tech traders before, um, you know, the feeling of playing a sports hopper for three credits and then immediately recouping the cost by popping it, plus uh, the card draw from Geist means that you're getting four cards for free with one action. Same thing with office supplies. If you manage to get up to four or more link, you get that sort of efficiency and it feels so, so good. Um, you know, to just draw into everything you need. That's amazing, uh, and it doesn't cost money, which is very important. Even though Sunny is often thought as the runner that is swimming in money, you must note that for the first few turns of the game, she can be very slow. Uh, every single link to offset the cost of getting this card draw really goes a long way. Right, so what are the sources of early link that allow you to make uh, office supplies that much more efficient? Well, this is not an exhaustive, exhaustive list, but these are the best four best cards I can find in the current card pool. Uh, we cannot consider cards that are consoles because they compete, compete with security nexus. So cards like Forger and Reflection are no-go. We also discount cards that are too expensive to install. Cards like Dyson Memchip and LLDS Diamond Processor. Those are way too expensive and provide you with benefits that you don't need, like extra memory. You, uh, Sunny doesn't need extra memory, so it's not worth playing those cards just to boost your link. Because of that, these are the only cards that you would probably consider if you're looking to directly boost your link. Let's look at each of them in detail. Maxwell James is the tier 1 card of choice because it fulfills all these three requirements. It's cheap to install, you're trading one credit for a link, it's cheap to import at one influence, and it has a secondary effect uh, of de resing remote eyes, which is always very useful for Sunny, who uh, might struggle to siege remotes early on in the game. Maxwell James is a fantastic uh, link choice, and you really should be running at least two copies of it in most Sunny decks, if not three. Next card we are going to look at is Rabbit Hole. Now this used to be a popular source of link in Sunny, but people have been gradually moving away from it because people have been realizing the biggest problem. 
Rabbit Hole provides too much link. I know it sounds really weird, how is too much link a problem? That's like a first world problem. But the thing is, um, you usually do not need more than 4 base link. As you see, for example, Office Supplies, uh, it maxes out at 4 link. At 5 or more link, you're not getting any additional benefits of Office Supplies. And that applies to most of the other Sunny Tracers. White Hat and Black Hat both have base trace values of 4 or less. So any additional link above 4 is likely not going to help you in achieving uh, a more successful trace. If anything, they slow down your setup, which is already a big problem. So yeah, you need to strike a balance between setting up your link and setting up your other cards, your economy, your draw, and your breakers. So you cannot waste too much time setting up link. Because of that, rabbit hole is a bit too much. Um, you, I mean, of course, you can choose to just install two rabbit holes instead of the full set of three, but it's still expensive. Four credits for two link uh, is not exactly cheap early on in the game. And while it's cheap to import, it doesn't provide any secondary effects like Maxwell James. So people haven't really been playing it for this reason. Sports Hopper used to be the go-to card draw slash link card in Sunny. You know, it fulfills both purposes uh, that Sunny really requires. However, it's really expensive in the early game. Uh, that's three credits that could have gone to another data folding or daily cast. Instead, it's spent on a source of link that doesn't immediately pay off. While it has a useful secondary effect in drawing cards, it really is the three play cost that really kills it because that's just not an efficient way to get Link. At least it's influence free, unlike the next card, the Archivist. Now, I would totally play this card in Sunny, but uh, because it has the same ratios as Maxwell James, it's cheap to install at one credit for the Link, and it has a secondary effect as well. But being priced at 4 influence, that's just way too steep. Even though Sunny has an overwhelming 25 influence, there are lots of other better cards to spend 4 influence on. You know, uh, deep data mining comes into mind immediately, rather than a card that gives you one link, you know? So it's very unfortunate. I would love to play a mix of Archivist and Maxwell James, because if you see multiple Maxwell Jameses early, they don't stack. Uh, whereas if you have Maxwell James and the Archivist down on the table, that's 4 base link you have and Office Supplies becomes a really good card. It's, it really is the influence cost that kills it. Alright, so uh, let's look at the deck that we're going to play, which is obviously going to be a Sunny deck running both Black Hat and Office Supplies. Time to justify some of my card choices, starting from the top. Most of my influence is spent on Immersion Creativity, which sounds really strange, but I've always wanted to do this. Playing Immersion Creativity in Sunny seems like the right thing to do, because her stuff is so expensive, especially that console which you want to get down ASAP. The combo obviously is you get an Immersion Creative, you draw your cards until you get an Immersion Creativity and a Nexus in hand. Then you play Immersion Creativity, trashing the Nexus in your hand for a Nexus from your deck. This does two things. Firstly, um, it reduces the play cost of Nexus by 8 credits. Effectively, Immersion Creativity is a 6 credit burst economy card. Very good for Sunny. And the other thing it does is that it thins your deck. Uh, fewer copies of duplicate consoles in your deck. Finally, even if you don't use it to install your console, you can still use it in a pinch to tilt out one of your breakers. So, very very flexible, useful card. I think it's well worth the 5 influence. DJ Fenris makes a comeback. I know you're sick of seeing him by now, but as I mentioned in the DJ Fenris successful demo video, he works best in mini factions because you have access to the entire suite of Shaper, Anarch, and Criminal uh, identity abilities. You know, you cannot pick an identity that matches your faction, but there are no other G mods that matches Sunny's faction, so we're all good. Obviously, the prime choice is a turn one Haley. Uh, because you're running so many resources, you're very likely able to trigger Hades' ability every turn, saving you lots of clicks in the long run. Steve, Cambridge, and Quetzal are very nice uh, uh, consolation prizes as well. One allows you to get past ice cheaply, the other allows you to recur key cards from your bin. Next, 3 Maxwell James, as I mentioned, because you really want to get up to 3 link ASAP so that your office supplies becomes good, like an inject. Power Tap is where I spend my dangling one influence on. It's a pseudo link. It doesn't synergize with Office Supplies because it doesn't directly contribute to your link, but it synergizes with all the other trace cards in that it refunds you one credit for each trace that fires, which effectively means that you have one extra link. Finally, I actually chose to cut one strike from my breaker suite. You typically run two of each breaker, 
but I'm only running one of the Sentry Breaker. That's because uh, the, what I've been finding so far is that most uh, co-op decks do not uh, run that many Sentries, or if they do, their Sentries tend to not end the run. We are thinking of cards like Melinzi in PU, we are thinking of Architects in HB, uh, we are thinking of, you know, yeah, uh, I mean, there are a couple of exceptions like Newshound in NBN and Archer in Wayland, but that's kind of about it. So we can actually afford to tank uh, subroutines from sentries like Cobra uh, and, you know, uh, Komainu and all that stuff. You know, it's, it's not going to uh, end our game or end the run or prevent us from getting into the remote. It simply means that, uh, you know... Uh, you know, we just have to suffer a bit, but that's fine. Eventually, we'll find our security nexus to offset the uh, painful subroutines, and eventually, we'll find find our one copy of strike to get past these sentries anyway. So basically, I don't think uh, we need multiple copies of a sentry breaker. So dropping one allows us to fit in more cards like black hat and white hat. All right, enough talking. Let's get into the game and see whether Sunny can beat the competition. <laughs> Today we are up against Next Design, which is a very bad matchup. We do not like facing up against Rush Corpse because Sunny, if there's one way you can abuse uh, Sunny's slow speed, that is to go as fast as you can and score 7 points before Sunny even finds her console. And unfortunately, a lot of Corpse can do this. This is the reason why you don't see a lot of Sunny, even though she just got a huge power boost between uh, Office Supplies and. Uh, Black Hat. I know Office Supplies shows up her early game, but it's still not enough to compete with the fastest of the fastest corpse. You know, Rashida is a problem, isn't it? Uh, Alright, so our opponent will get a 3 ice hit start over us. And, well, our opening hand is okay. Um, it has two money cards, daily cards and data folding. So, if all goes well, my turn one is going to be take two credits and install both of those money cards. There's also the office supplies in my hand, which I plan to use on my second turn. Um, so on my first turn, I'll go up to 7 credits before dropping back down to 1 credit uh, after playing the 2 money cards. On the start of my next turn, I'll get 3 credits, tr 3 drip credits, which brings me to 4. I'll play office supplies, which drops me down to 2 credits, but will draw me 4 cards and I'll take it from there. So already I'm planning out my turn 1 and part of my turn 2, even before my opponent shows me what they're doing with their identity ability. I also have an Immersion Creativity in my opening hand, which is a great card to see. Um, if, in the event, I draw a Security Nexus off my Office Supplies, I can immediately start threatening my opponent's Remote and or Centros, because I can Immersion Creativity into Nexus, and then challenge my opponent's scoring remote, or even fire off the deep data mining in my hand. So yeah, a very good opening hand, all the cards have some purpose. Unfortunately, it seems like my opponent has an equally good opening hand. Remember the early Rashida I was talking about that we all feared? Well, it looks like they found that along with a Ginger City Grid. We are in some trouble, folks. So basically, my opponent can just score 7 points off that remote, and there's not much I can do about it. Thankfully, as I mentioned, the office supplies did bring me some uh, goodies. The donuts did pay off as uh, my lead pointed me to a security nexus in hand. Unfortunately, I also drew a career fair that, but <laughs> did not have any resources to play off it. So I tried to click 3 draw for a resource and it didn't work. I did not find a resource, so my last click was to get rid of some card in my hand because I had to discard at the end of turn anyway. I chose to click 4, play Office Supplies. So uh, normally you would go for the card draw here, but obviously um, I needed, I didn't need any more cards in hand. I needed to discard at the end of the turn. So this is one of those niche situations where you actually go for the money from Office Supplies rather than the card draw. Because I was going to discard Office Supplies at the end of the turn anyway, due to hand size. Might as well get... Um, two credits out of my click instead of the normal one credit by clicking for credit. So yeah, very, very, very marginal office supplies usage there, but it can't be helped because that was the hand that I drew into. 
Meanwhile, my opponent scores a remote enforcement and reveals an Arella Salvatore in the remote. So things are going to get gnarly really quick. Uh, they're just going to chain agendas in the remote and it looks like there's no way I'm going to be able to contest that remote with a strength 10 surveyor already, jeez. Thankfully, they did not put an agenda in the remote. Instead, they put an advanced ice on the remote. So buffering up the surveyor uh, and leaving themselves only two credits after scoring the agenda. So I take the opportunity to deny agendas off the top of the deck by running R&D with deep data mining. The first card is an SSL endorsement, which I steal. The second card is a Christian Grid, which immediately forced me to look at Black Hat. Black Hat increases the number of accesses you have regardless of whether it's a successful or unsuccessful run. So Christian Grid does not uh, interact with Black Hat in any way. It cannot stop Black Hat. So I left Christian Grid off on R&D without trashing it because I knew that I did not have any more deep data minings in my deck and Christian Grid wouldn't stop my Black Hat from happening. Then I continued running my opponent's HQ here because they were too poor to res ice. I needed to make sure that they did not have access to agendas to put in the remote. And thankfully, I found the Ikawa project. So by stealing the Ikawa, I go up to six points. Already, I'm at match point. So thankfully, this game looks like it's salvageable after all. Even though the rush matchup's not in my favor, my opponent made the big mistake of going down to two credits, which allowed me to basically bust open the centrals and steal six points. I would never make those runs if they were rich because I can't afford to take the tempo hit of running to a fresh out 3 on Architect. So uh, the game continues and I am forced to discard my employee strike here because it's absolutely useless in this one matchup where the Corp ID ability fires before the game even starts. Right, so having drawn a couple of cards now, I'm shaping my hand nicely. Uh, among other things, I found my R&D pressure in Black Hat as well as a few Burst Econ cards. I'm now at healthy 14 credits but without any real breakers all i have is a nexus and a strike uh, notice i discarded striker earlier on this means that i am most likely not going to be able to siege this remote uh, the surveyor even though i have a good base link three link with the security nexus unfortunately strength 10 base trace 10 surveyor is still really hard to beat so i'm going to make a very tough call here because it looks like there's an agenda in the remote. I'm going to run the remote and save my Nexus trigger. So normally you use security Nexus to bypass the surveyor, which is often a nasty piece of ice. But here, I'm going to trace through the surveyor. This actually means taking two tags, a very risky move because, you know, Sunny is very re uh, resource reliant. But I realized that my opponent's too poor, right? That's the main thing. They are way too poor. They haven't drawn much money. Uh, even though they have been getting lots of ginger efficiency. So uh, because they are poor, I figure that, and because I don't have that many resources installed, I figure I can get away with taking tags and not have my resources trashed. While my opponent's able to stop me with two hard end the runs, they had to spend all seven credits doing so because it turns out their binary eyes were very expensive. Say the adaptive barrier and magnet are not cheap for their end the run effects. So I nixus bypass the magnet. I got stopped by the Seder, but this delayed their scoring. I mean, sure, they are able to score the Vitruvius here, but that puts them down at one credit. They are at six agenda points, but they cannot, you know, score the next agenda. They are too poor. So they use Arella Salvatore to install a bunch of stuff on R&D, but I know they can't defend it. They only have one credit. So I could theoretically fire Black Hat off here and go in for R&D. However, I just very recently did the deep data mining. So, you know, best to hold off a couple more turns. Uh, wait for my opponent to draw through the deep data mining and then fire off the black hat to get as many fresh accesses as possible. Right, don't forget I'm still tagged, but because my opponent's super poor, they couldn't afford to trash my data folding, so the tags are really irrelevant at this point. They could have a boom in hand, but given that they are next designed with 12 influence, I don't think they're running boom. Not with a Rella Salvatore costing 3 influence a pop, Surveyor costing 2 influence a pop, they probably don't have tag punishment, so I'm fine. Now the next turn, I fire off the black hat to get 3 fresh accesses off R&D. Better do this while they are poor and can't afford to rest too many ice. Even if they rest an ice here, I can bypass it with security nexus. So I'm feeling fairly confident about this run even though I have no breakers. Uh, the combination of them being poor and me having nexus means that they probably can't do anything about this run. And I know there's a Christian grid on R&D, but that doesn't stop black hat's multi-access. Just like turning wheel. The access persists and we find the final agenda for the win off the top of R&D anyway. 
all that said and done, it was a very close game, much closer than even the scoreline would have you believe because, um, you know, e- my opponent basically had that game. They had the surveyor, the surveyor Ginger City Grid remote set up turn one. All they had to do was to pump agendas through that remote. Unfortunately, they left a big hole in the centrals and that's what allowed me to win. I was able to deny them the Ikawa project and the SSL endorsement. Stealing them was nice, you know, I got agenda points, but the main thing I did was to make sure my opponent did not have access to those agendas. They were forced to score three two-pointers, which put them at six points, not enough to win the game. That's how I won. Had they scored a three-pointer, they would have seven points. They win the game. So granted, my opponent uh, got rather unlucky on their, dro- on their draw. They did not really see any money cards other than the SSL I stole. Uh, so that prevented them from defending centrals as much as they would have liked. Uh, but also, they just jammed the accelerator too far, too much. You know, they hit the gas, they tried to score too many agendas quickly, and left themselves too poor, allowing me to pry open the centrals with the deep data mining and black hat that fetched me those three-pointer agendas. So their biggest mistake was, you know, not showing up centrals, which um, uh, turns out uh, you actually want to defend centrals against Sunny. Uh, Don't get the impression that she's a very passive runner that doesn't want to run centrals. Believe me, when she fires off a black hat or deep data mining, things are going to get nasty real quick. You have to respect the multi-access potential that can come out from Sunny nowadays. Uh, Them being poor also did not help because they weren't able to contest my Nixus tracers, the Surveyor tracers, or the black hat tracers. Uh, so leaving yourself uh, too poor to contest those traces, not a good idea either. Now if you were watching this video expecting to see maximum efficiency out of Office Supplies and Black Hat, I'm sorry to say, in most Sunny games, you're just not going to get the zero cost Office Supplies or those massive amazing runs that you think you get with Black Hat. If your corp opponent is even half decent at the game, they will be pressuring you into making suboptimal decisions like making remote runs and prematurely firing set events instead of you know setting up your massive combo based engine. Uh, that's just not how Netrunner works. This is not install runner. This is Netrunner. The corp does some things, they pressure you into running and you have to react to them. As a result, I'm forced to often do things like play office supplies even though I don't have all my links set up. I'm forced to play Black Hat, even though I would like to save it up uh, for big combos, as I'll explain later. So it's important to adapt your game plan to uh, the tempo that the corp dictates for you, because oftentimes, against good opponents, they are not going to just let you get maximum efficiency out of every card. And this is something you know, you have to expect. Right, so because of that, we won't be able to showcase the maximum efficiency of each card, but that's fine. We can still talk about what these cards can do uh, in conjunction with other cards uh, to provide maximum synergy. Uh, we've already talked about office supplies and how it scales with Link. Let's now talk about Black Hat's nombos and combos. Actually, there won't be that many nom- There are no nombos at all. Um, you know, Black Hat's a pretty good all-rounder card, so we'll just talk about the combos. Firstly, Black Hat synergizes with Divide and Conquer. Now, as it turns out, Black Hat is not a run event itself, so you can stack it with run events. Um, and that's pretty cool. But what makes it really cool is that it uh, increases accesses on both HQ and R&D. So a card like Divide and Conquer will be doubly boosted by Black Hat. That's amazing. Um, And because of that, it makes Divide and Conquer a viable alternative to deep data mining for multi-access. After all, they are both 4 influence costs and 3 to play. And you can argue that Divide and Conquer is better than deep data mining because courts tend to uh, not really expect it and not defend archives as much. My main issue with Divide and Conquer is that it really requires you to have the black hat in hand in order to work, whereas Deep Data Mining works right out of the box. You draw it, you can uh, play it immediately. Divide and Conquer requires some setup, but can be cheaper to fire off than Deep Data Mining if uh, you find the black hat to pull off with it. Right, the other combo, a rather subtle combo, is that Black Hat actually stacks with with itself. Again, because it is not a run event, you can uh, stack its effect with itself. If you play two Black Hats as your click 1 and click 2 respectively, you will get plus 2 accesses, plus 2 accesses, that's 
an additional 4 accesses on both R&D and HQ. Your regular R&D run suddenly becomes as, uh, as deep digging as deep data mining, and your regular HQ run will simply sweep your corp opponent's entire hand as long as they are not cerebral imaging. So that's really cool, and that's what I mean by, you know, extracting full potential out of the card. Ideally, you want to wait until you have multiple black hats in hand before playing them all at once. Then you can, um, you know, get massive value out of a single run. The trouble with that is obviously it takes time to set up and most corps won't give you the space needed to do so. Another thing you have to keep in mind is that after playing two black hats, you will only have two clicks remaining to make runs. So that can be a limiting factor. Oftentimes you can't afford to run last click or you need to reserve extra clicks to do things like clearing tags after a run. So keep that in mind. It's not always you want to go for this combo. You have to adapt based on what your opponent is throwing at you and what you draw. Before we end off, I'd like to draw your attention to uh, what I believe is one of the best uh, Netrunner DB resources out there. I stumbled upon this after making this entire video. Um, this is a sunny deck that was published very recently that placed top 8 in Cambridge Regionals, piloted and created by Aero Saucer. This is an amazing resource, not just because it's a competitive deck, but because uh, Aero Saucer took the time to make a very detailed write up about Sunny, uh, having played her for, I quote, heavily over a year. So, well, this person knows what they're talking about. Uh, they go in-depth into the traps that you should avoid when building a Sunny deck and into detail about uh, the good cards that can be played in Sunny. And I find it, the most amazing thing I find it find is that even though I did not make an, you know, I did not have this resource to refer to while I was building my own Sunny deck, in the end, our decks are actually pretty similar. If you put the deck this side to side, you can find so many similar points. The choice of unique card is the same. We both converge on deep data mining as an uh, R&D pressure card. We both found immersion creativity to be wonderful in Sunny. That's what I find really amazing. And even in their write-up, uh, Aeros also admits that they would 100% slot a second immersion creativity, uh, swapping out some of the other influence pips. So I think we both found a very good uh, engine for Sunny even uh, to the uh, fine detail of running two, exactly two Earthrise hotels, not three, not zero, not one. We are both running two Earthrise. So that's really uh, heartwarming to see, I should say. Uh, but of course, uh, there are some differences as well. Uh, most notably, um, Aeros also mentioned that uh, they think that data folding is a trap in Sunny because there is a need to balance between long-term economy and burst economy, the latter of which is sorely lacking in Sunny even with office supplies. Uh, I'm not sure. I can get behind the reasoning. I do agree that a long-term economy is not an issue, but my data folding paid off pretty well this game, I think. So I'm, I'm really not sure. It's pretty close. Uh, I do agree that you would probably want to swap out some long-term economy cards for some burst economy. You know, you see Deuces Wild in Aerosource's deck where I'm using Career Fair. And I did actually find Career Fair to be a problem this game. I drew two copies of them and had nothing to fire them off on because I installed daily cards and data folding early and just never drew into another three or more cost resource after that. So they are probably right. I should be uh, running Deuces Wild instead. But otherwise, very similar decks and I like that we actually...